How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, AKA Dr. Calcagno, and I am a first year family medicine resident and recent graduate of McMaster Medical School. Now, when I first started putting videos out on YouTube, it was about three years ago now. And, and first of all, the editing was not really good, but the videos that I did in the beginning were on the admissions guides to the Ontario Medical Schools. And in these three years, they stood the test of time. They've gotten over tens of thousands of views and I feel like they've really been able to help someone out. The reason why I originally made them was because as a student coming into the medical profession without a medical background at all and no one in my family from medicine, I really didn't know where to look for different application tips and what websites to look into for the different requirements. But I do know that looking at the application requirements for medical school as early as possible is the number one thing that you could do to set yourself up for success. So I've decided that because so much has changed in the last three years in terms of medical school applications, I'm going to be redoing all of the Ontario Medical School guides. If this stuff is helpful, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And I'm gonna open it up to everyone else. I want this to be the last time that I am talking about this on the channel in the hopes that one of you will see this video and moving forward, we will have more admissions guides every single year for all the students that will be applying here on YouTube for people to see. Now, I wanna quickly start off with the disclaimer that these are not official guides. I am not officially associated or associated with the University of Toronto in any single way for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to be sure to link the official website so you could go on and look for yourself what the requirements are. But for today's first video, we are looking at the U of T School of Medicine, the University of Toronto, one of the best known programs in the country, and also one of the highest ranked consistently whenever people do look at the different statistics. Now, U of T has a really great website. So we're going to start off and looking at the admission statistics, and then we'll get into the guide right after we look at the stats. But to start off, when you do look at the admission statistics for U of T, last year, there were 4,302 applicants for what I believe were 259 seats, which means that the exception acceptance rate was about 6%, which sounds like it's pretty low and it is really low, but that is not anywhere close to the lowest in Ontario. One thing to keep in mind when we're talking about the Ontario medical schools moving forward is that these schools have some of the lowest acceptance rates out of any medical school in the entire world. We're talking about some Ontario medical schools with admissions percentages in the mid 3% to low 3%, even some in the 2% range when it comes to how many people actually end up getting into the program. And many of these schools do rival Harvard and other major Ivy League American schools when it comes to how competitive it is to get into. So we'll take a look at admissions at a glance and it's really awesome that U of T provides this data on their website. But out of the 4,302 applications, there were 638 people that actually came in for an interview out of the final accepted class of that around 259 spots, there were about 27% male, which is actually quite low, 65% female and 8% unreported. And the average accepted GPA was a 3.94. Traditionally, U of T has some of the highest accepted average GPAs. I'm expecting that to go down because of such a big change that was just made in this last year, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And what we see is that the students that came in 58% were coming from a four-year bachelor's degree. 6% did not have a degree yet, and we'll talk about that in a little bit too. 31% came from a graduate or professional background, and 5% came from a completed three-year bachelor's degree. When you look at where the students themselves came from, the vast majority of people that got into U of T Medical School were from somewhere in Canada. The two most popular schools were Toronto and McMaster, and it looks like for some people that have been asking me lately, if I had to just eyeball looking at the margins here, there were about three students that came from an international program um, and, and less than 10 that came from the United States. Now, when it comes to applying to U of T Medical School, they make it very clear that they have both academic and non-academic requirements. Now, the thing about requirements is that if you don't meet a requirement, this is like a firm cutoff. If you're not meeting that bar, you can't even hypothetically be accepted into the program. So for example, if there was an MCAT minimum of 125 and 124 in one section, which we'll talk about more in a bit, and you have one section, the biology section, where you scored 120, you would not be able under any circumstances to get accepted into U of T medical school under the traditional stream. And therefore it's almost thought of as a waste of your application dollars to apply to a school in which you don't meet the requirements. So that's just something to keep in mind for anyone on a limited budget, wondering how to make the most of their application funds. So starting first with the academic requirements, first things first, they say that in order to apply, you have to at least have some previous university experience. The earliest you could apply is the beginning of 
your third year of your undergraduate studies and that's why so in Ontario there are two different types of undergrad degrees for the most part there are some three-year bachelor's degrees and then there are some four-year honors degrees you could apply if you are in a four-year honors degree you could apply at the beginning of your third year and then you're in third year so you're going to finish all of those classes if you are accepted and then if you were to fail then you wouldn't have the mandatory requirements and then you wouldn't be let in but the earliest you can apply is at the start of your third year now they split the academic requirements up into three different categories you have your undergraduate category your graduate category and then your international student category starting from the top with your undergrad they have a nice chart you can go and look at um, we just talked about the undergraduate requirement there but if you are a graduate student you need to in order to fit that category you need to at least have achieved a master's or a PhD in order to fall into the graduate category. If you want to fall into the international category, you do need to complete a non-medical bachelor's degree equivalent to a four-year bachelor's degree in Canada with the WES transcript assessment. You can learn more about it on their website if you click the link. Now, there are prerequisite courses when you're applying to U of T. For undergraduate, you need two full course equivalents in life sciences and one full course equivalent in social science, humanities, or language. That is the same thing for graduate and international students. They have a list of different things that meet those requirements. You're definitely going to want to go check that out on their website to see whether or not you have a course that fits in to that basket but just know that there are requirements and if you are a student looking to apply in the future make sure that you have that all figured out in terms of your transcript now this is where there were some changes made when it comes to their gpa two big changes that are new for this cycle is that previously before u of t used to take a weighted average of your gpa and this was a really really big change that happened this year because with the weighted average what that meant is that if you qualified if you took a full course load for all of the, the the years that you were enrolled according to their formula they would drop some of your lowest marks from your your application so that's why when you look at some of the stats for previous years there were some where the average accepted gpa was like 3.96 or 3.97 in some cases and that's because if you followed their rules you could have five courses in a semester get an a plus an a plus an a plus an a plus and a d and you would just drop the D if you met the weighting criteria, but that's officially not gonna happen anymore. There were changes that were made given the pandemic and moving forward, it looks like they will no longer be looking at weighted averages, but from now on, they're just going to be taking your actual GPA that you've achieved on a 4.0 scale, and you could do, go ahead and do the OMSAS conversion with the link on their website. Basically what that means is that if you come from a school that doesn't use the 4.0 scale, you could just convert them to the 4.0 scale to see what your new GPA is going to be. Now, the thing with the U of T GPA is that it is viewed as both a cutoff, an absolute cutoff, and also to make yourself more competitive. So if you are an undergrad, you need a GPA of a 3.6 on the 4.0 scale to even apply. If it's lower than a 3.6, you can't even technically apply, but also the higher your GPA goes, the better chances you have of being called in for an interview. Now, when you're a graduate applicant, one of the, the benefits of being a graduate applicant traditionally, and this is now the new change that they've made this year, is that before, graduate applicants only needed a 3.0 GPA in order to have a chance of getting in. Now you need a minimum of a 3.3, and it's probably even higher than that to be considered competitive. So minimum for graduates are now 3.3. The higher you go, the better your chances are. And if you are an international student, you are going to see the undergrad or graduate requirements. It's, it's similar to when you apply for both an undergrad and a graduate space. Now to move on to the MCAT, the MCAT usefulness for U of T is only such in that it is a threshold. As long as you are meeting the minimum threshold scores, which are a 125 in every Every single section and then one section you're allowed to have a 124 but not lower than that you can't have a 123 or 122 but as long as you meet those MCAT cutoffs the MCAT doesn't mean squat for the rest of your application so having a higher MCAT when I applied to U of T with my MCAT it was a really good MCAT score didn't really help me at all I just had to meet the threshold requirement and once that's done they kind of just toss it out in terms of the rest of your application. You've advanced to the next part of their screening. Now, the last thing to know for the academic requirements is that there is a space for an academic explanation essay. And basically you will find more details on their website, but this is an optional essay that you get to submit if you feel like there were some sort of extenuating circumstances, something that was outside of your control, or you want to explain why your grades in maybe one semester or as a whole weren't 
a good representation of what you believe your academic potential to be. So again, read more about that on their website, but that is an optional requirement for the academic part of the, of the evaluation. So now moving on to the second part of the evaluation, these are the non-academic components of your application. And basically there are three that you need to know. The first is the essays, the personal essays that you have to write for U of T. In the past, you had to write four, but starting this year, you now have to do two. And they're up on the website right now. We could just go ahead and give them a quick look. But basically, question number one is talking about the COVID-19 pandemic. And I don't know what I'm allowed to say about this, so I'm going to keep my, my feedback here to an absolute minimum. But that's question number one. Question number two is, what are the three most important elements of a mentoring relationship? And then more to follow. I want these, these videos to be um, showing you what the applications are like. I don't want to bias anyone in their opinion, so I'm not going to really comment on it. But basically what you need to know is that the way U of T says that they evaluate your responses to these questions, first of all, they have to be 250 words or less. So a total between the two is about 500 words. And then also they pay very close attention to their clusters. The clusters, the four up on the screen, professional, communicator, advocate, and scholar, are based on the CanMeds roles. And here in Ontario, in Canada, the CanMeds roles are such a crucial buzzword. If you don't know what the CanMeds roles are here when applying to medical school, you're at a great disadvantage in terms of applying. So I will go ahead and link that in the description below. I will have a picture of it up on the screen, but just know that these are qualities that are supposed to be embodied by uh, Canadian physicians. And they are things that U of T pays attention to when you are answering their questions. They ask that you try and incorporate them into your answers if possible. The other two non-academic requirements are the autobiographical sketch. That is when you are applying to the Ontario Medical Schools through OMSAS, you have to include different activities as well as people that could verify that you aren't lying about those activities um, on your application. They are everything that you've done since the age of 16. And I do believe that there is a limit as to how many you could include, but they go over the categories of employment, volunteer activities, extracurriculars, awards and accomplishments, research and other activities and achievements. And then the last part of the non-academic part of your application are your references. You get to do three references. Um, also through OMSAS, they will have all the explanations on there when you do go and apply to medical school. Now that is going to be the entire application process. I would highly advise people to go onto U of T's website, look at their frequently asked questions, see some of the more common questions that have come up because they have a lot of stuff that people have asked them that they've broken down for you on their website. But one final thing that I will say is that I've gone over the regular stream. This is the, you know, the standard application stream, the one that I applied to when I applied to medical school. But there are other application streams on the website. And as an applicant, if you fall into one of these categories, you are able to apply through that stream. The other four streams that I could see on their website right now are the Black Applicant Stream, the Indigenous Applicant Stream, the MD slash PhD program stream that you could apply to, and that's, that's a separate degree that you could read about. And finally, the MMTP, or or the military medical training plan application stream each of these are going to have their own additional criteria my understanding is that you are still going to apply in the exact same way but the majority of these will have an additional section maybe asking you for a reflective essay or reasons why you believe that you uh, identify with a particular group or are able to apply via the stream and I would love to give you guys more details on this, but the fact of the matter is that I am way over my head with stuff like that. I didn't apply to those streams myself. I'm hoping that in the future, very soon, I'll be able to bring one of my friends onto the channel that did apply through one of those streams. And I think they'd be able to share a lot of good insights with people looking into to following that path as well. But in the meantime, I do hope that this video was able to help for, for today. I hope that this gave you a good idea of what you need to do moving forward if you do want to go to uh, U of T. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section down below. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Best of luck, everyone, and everyone take care.